I know you have seen on the thumbnail and the title of this video, which says, Study in Norway for free. There is no tuition and fees if you want to study in Norway, be it in bachelor degree, be it in master's degree, or doctoral studies. It is 100% free of charge. It doesn't matter whether you are international students from Africa or whether you are international students from America or whether you are from international student from uh, from Asia or from Latin America or even any other country in Europe but you want to go to study in Norway there is no tuition and fees in other words from kindergarten to PhD is free of charge how can you access that opportunity so today I'm going to explain in detail the policy behind of no tuition and fees for anybody to go to study in Norway. How are you going to apply, whether it be bachelor degree, master's or doctoral studies? And if you get admitted, what are the steps to go and start your studies? Meaning, what are the visa requirement processes? And how are you going to submit the evidence about the cost of living? Remember, I've been talking about the no tuition and fees. School fees, whatever you call it, but we call it tuition and fees. But what about the cost of living? That is the, a component which is very crucial. I'll go to explain in detail. But what are the requirements also or access of the opportunities once you are in the country in terms of work uh, permit or work opportunities are they available how much do they pay can you be able to sustain your life if you are in Oslo for instance or where you are in Tromsø in Norway so those are the very good question I think you have it so if you are a student and you have to have discussion with your parent this is the video where you have to you have to talk in detail with your parent on how it can be able to support but the most important part of this video i usually want people who want to go to study in certain countries which you pay a lot to have you have to consider whether that decision you have is a good decision or not i mean let's say you want to come to study in america bachelor degree or master's degree or PhD why should you come to America to pay for tuition and fees 15,000 20,000 US dollar and then on top of that you come to put living expenses on that so for one academic year you are going to spend over 25,000 to 30,000 US dollar or you want to go to study in Britain or to Canada but you pay on your own you don't have fully fully scholarship so why do you need to go to these countries and pay thousands and thousands of US dollars? But if you go to Norway, you are going to eliminate over 60% of your entire cost because you don't pay tuition and fees. So the only thing will be able to matter for you will be the cost of living. And I will explain in detail how to go about that. Sorry for the long introduction, but I had to do that. I want for you to do a few things for me. Number one is... If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Uh, if you are not looking for, for scholarships, or if you are not looking for further education, you don't need to stop this video. Take this video, send it to your WhatsApp group. Take this video, post on your Instagram. Take this video, post on your Facebook. Meaning, other people are looking for this kind of information. If it doesn't uh, affect you or it doesn't have any importance for you, it doesn't mean that you have to block the information from another person. Share to other people who are looking for this information. This is a gold mining information. So, what other thing I want you to do? I would like for you to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so. And put click the, uh, the like button so that YouTube can be able to share or to recommend my video to so many other people. So apart from that, let's go into detail about Norway. Uh, so my brother, uh, who is now a professor and the deep university chancellor of one of the universities in Tanzania, uh, studied in Norway uh, for his master's in ICT at the University of Oslo, or Oslo University. So for me, when I was growing up, up until I'm going to the college, 
especially when I was in college, a uh, bachelor degree in Tanzania, my one of the targets was to go to Norway because I knew coming to America would be very, very difficult compared to go to Europe. So I had my targets of countries. One of the countries was Norway because I knew every item on how to apply and to go to Norway. I knew about it. At that particular time, there was what we call a uh, special government funding, which was uh, the, the the type of scholarship which pays for citizen coming from developing countries from particular universities. They had a certain kind of public university uh, partnership where if you apply, you get it, you can go there. But unfortunately, that scholarship uh, was ended back. I think it was. Uh, if not mistaken, it was about uh, 2013, whatever, something like that, or whatever, 2015. But it was ended that particular scholarship. So because that scholarship is not there anymore, what with the scholarship was called the quota scheme scholarship. So if you go in the Google quota scheme scholarship, is no longer available because they say they are running out of money for that particular scholarship to fund it. So now. There is no scholarship, but even before during that time, if you go without a scholarship, you go as self-financing student. So self-financing students are the students you are going to pay for yourself. But Norway does, doesn't have scholarship. I mean, doesn't have the uh, tuition and fees. So for my goal was, I know if I get this kind of GPA, I will apply to Norway. Then, if I didn't go to Norway, I was thinking I would be going to maybe uh, Netherlands because they have another type of scholarship there, Norfolk. Then there is there was D Denmark. Then there was uh, Finland. Then there is England. So there are certain countries I knew each and everywhere to go. But Norway uh, provided all these opportunities that even if you don't get a scholarship, you have a backup. There are other countries I'll talk about in a different video, but this is specific for Norway. So whether you apply for bachelor, master's or PhD, procedures are more or less the same or similar way. So number one, the application is free of charge. There is no application free. Uh, there is no application fee. Just like how you do into uh, applying to American universities or universities in Canada, you have to pay a certain particular fee. In Norway, there is no that one. These are the things you need to consider. Uh, if you are coming from developing countries, uh, you have to apply for a program which is taught in English, unless otherwise you know Norwegian, you can be able to study Norwegian. Unfortunately, there are very few universities with very few specific programs which provide uh, education in English language. So for the bachelor degree, there are not many universities. But for masters and PhD, there are so many universities with providing education and use English as a medium of instruction. So, if you want to pursue a bachelor's degree, you have to figure out a very few universities, such as those universities, uh, I can put some on the link and you can be able to see them. But if you are doing for master's or PhD, there are so many universities. Secondly, 99.9% .9 of these universities are public universities. Private universities, they continue to have certain type of fees. But public universities, they don't have that one. So, then there is some of the things you need to submit. Number one, obviously you need to submit your transcript or education documents. If you are applying for bachelor degree, so you need to, to provide high school and the previous other documents to show your academic uh, level. If you are applying for master's, you need to have a bachelor degree with obviously good results. If you are applying for PhD, you need to have bachelor and master's to be able to apply for PhD. So that's number one, academic transcript. Number two, what you need to have, you need to have a resume or CV, curriculum vitae. You need to write in a very competitive way. If you want a video about how to avoid to put any mistakes, I have so many videos on how to avoid. Don't put your tribe, don't put your agenda, don't put the date of birth, don't put this kind of uh, marital status, like how many kids you have. Who cares? We don't care, unfortunately. So, you have to put a very competitive resume. That's what you have to put there. And in your resume, on the work experience, include both paid work experience and unpaid work experience. If you have done uh, things like, uh, let's say, volunteering, internship, 
add those kind of things, they have a bigger meaning. You cannot say my overall goal or the importance why I want to study this particular program of rural development at the University of Bergen is for me to come back in my rural village of Kigoma to help one, two, three, while in your entire resume you have never done anything to help anybody in your entire life. It doesn't make sense. But if you have been able to do so many things, even for volunteering for free, in internship-wise, you can have justification. This guy has presented or used most some of the time to be able to apply. So that is something you need to consider. So you need to have a resume, transcript. Uh, then you need to show also the English proficiency. So there are some of the countries that have been exempted. There are some of the countries that are not exempted. Previously, they used to exempt almost all the countries as long as you studied even just up to high school in English or bachelor degree in English. Now they can say you have to take the exam or you can request a specific exemption. So that is something you need to understand that one. And then uh, sometimes they need uh, some sort of statement of purpose depending on the level or the program you are applying. Meaning, why do you want to study that program? Why that particular university? What are you going to contribute to that university or that particular department? What are you going to do once you graduate, once you finish your studies, you go back to your home country? And obviously, when you come to the visa, I will tell you, you have to prove that you'll be going to back to your home country. That is something you need to do to do that one. So then you apply for your studies. But for PhD, obviously, you have to get supervisor first. But for bachelor and master's, you apply directly to the universities. So that is something you need to do. Application, there is no application fee. English proficiency test, yes, is required, but depending on the country, you can get exemption. Sometimes you can request exemption, especially during the pandemic, you can say there is no exam death centers at the, at the moment which are opening, but I studied this in high school, up to high school in English, and my bachelor degree maybe is in English language, so you request it for the exemption. So that is something you apply. Then you get admission. The admission letter has a lot of information. Some of those information is to secure the position and also to do the process to get the visa. In order to get the visa, this is the part which you need to understand very, very well. Number one, there is application fee for the visa itself. The visa fee, it looks like a more expensive visa fee like you, can, you, you, you cannot imagine like in other countries. Because for instance, in U.S., all the visas you are going to apply, uh, they are less than 300. Like, even a green card visa is 330. A student visa is 160, something like that. So all the visa fees are normal type of visas. But this one is, if you use their, their corona, the type of, of fee is a little bit high. But in the US dollar, is 650. But depending on the exchange rate and other things can be 600, 630, 650. But go with the application for the visa fee is uh, 650. Why is this that amount? That amount is also going to help you with the uh, some of the technical like work permit, I think, but that is the visa fee you have to apply. But they are not going to give you the visa until you prove that you have a uh, sufficient fund to be able to leave the cost of living. Remember, in Europe, is different, uh, or just like specifically, let's say uh, in 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 Norway is different. Most of the, some of the European countries they have, have a very system where if even if you are if you are there and you don't have enough money, they can find a way to support you. In order to avoid that, for you to become a burden in the country of Norway, you have to provide the evidence of sufficient financial funds for the entire period of study. That is including if you are coming with your spouse or you are coming with a child, even to include the accompanying family member. And that one should be in Norwegian account, not in your bank account of National Microfinance Bank or National Bank of Commerce, uh, Bank of CRDB, whatever in country you are. Not those kind of bank. They don't trust that one. You have to have the money in personal bank account in Norway in Norwegian bank. 
But you don't you cannot open the bank in Norway because in order to open the bank in Norway you must have Norwegian personal number. For instance, in the United States, in order to open a bank account, you must have a social security number. So if you don't have a social security number, you cannot open the bank account. So the same way in Norway, you have to have Norwegian personal number to be allowed to open the account, but you cannot. So if you cannot, the university you are going to study, whether it's the Tromsø, whether it's Bergen, whether it is uh, whatever university you are going, you, there is a bank account, the university bank account, you have to deposit your money into the academic institution where you are going to study. That academic institution is going to generate a bank account coming from the university to you. That bank statement from the university, from the Norwegian bank, is the one you are going to use to get the visa. How much money do you need to have? You need to have at least, let's say, 15,000 US dollar in your bank account. In, I mean, you have to give to them, which is, they say is 14,350. Uh, that one sometimes is varies depending of year and year. So is they put it in the Norwegian amount, the Norwegian krona, uh, which is 116,369, whatever. But if you convert, it's 14,350. So just make it easy. Just go with the 15,000 US dollar. So you need to deposit 15,000. Yes, it's a lot of money. I know that. But is different if you say you are coming to study in America. That will be just for tuition and fees. If you come to study in America, that will be a lot. So, you deposit that money. The academic institution gives you the bank statement. You have the admission. The bank statement shows the proof that you have the money, evidence of the money. Then you have to show the evidence of where you are going to live. That means the apartment. Remember, the money you have... It will be the cost of money will help you to live. So you can apply uh, for halls of residence, like a dormitory, uh, if you're going to find an apartment in the street, whatever. So you need to show that you have applied and you're going to live somewhere. Then you have to show uh, that we, upon ap after finishing your degree, your studies, you'll be coming back to your home country. At that particular time, you'll be able to show some sort like, I'm going with them for going to return a ticket, something, I'm going to do master's, two years I'll be going there and come back. But wh what happened to your $15,000 money you have put in the bank? So you are applying to the visa, they give you the visa. You go to Norway, once you arrive there, they are going to give you a certain amount of money. So half of it, almost like 40%, there is a certain amount they will give you right away once you arrive. Before you open the bank account. Then you have to apply for Norwegian personal number. You have to apply for a residence permit, whatever. I mean, the permit to be allowed to work. All those kind of things, opening the bank account. Once you open those ones, they are going to give the rest of the money. So they are not going to keep that money. The cost of living in major cities in Norway, sorry, it's a little bit too expensive. So it is about 1,000 US dollar average per month. Oh, it could be Euro, but let's say, let's go with US dollar. Let's say it's 1,000 per month. That is the cost of living in major, uh, some of the cities in Norway. But this is the good thing. Uh, because you are a student, you'll be default to be given the, uh, the work permit. The, 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 the permit which will be able to be given uh, will be able uh, uh, it will be allowed to work you part time the part time you are allowed to work you are allowed to work 20 hours maximum per week so per month is 80 hours per month that is the number of hours you are supposed to work so let's say you are getting maybe 10 euro or let's say if you put in the US dollar 12, 13 dollar per hour or 14 dollar per hour so if you get $14 per hour, this is the $14 per hour, per month you are working 80 hours, 20 hours per week. And remember you are going to make, you are going to be like you said, distributing newspaper, cleaning, working in the cafeteria, whatever, the normal type of jobs. So you are going to get about this amount, $1,200, 1100 something like that. So if you have this amount, it will be able to help you to live comfortably in Norway. Uh, during the holidays, you are allowed to work full time. You are allowed to work no matter how many hours, there is no problem. But sometimes during the school year, 
yes, there is a certain exception. There are certain kind of job you'll be allowed to work for full time. I mean, for more than, but not for extended time. For short time, you'll be, you can get permission, but you have to get permit for that. But all in all, what I'm trying to explain is this way. So even if you get the money from someone, you, you show the money you have, you go there, you take the money back after two months, whatever, you send back to money to your, your relative who helped you, and you have a small amount to start with, you'll be able to survive because the amount of the money will be able to work to get the money you'll be able to survive in Norway so those are the things you needed to know about that way but what about you have applied for the school you got admission you show that you are going to, to stay in this you have proof of residence what you are going to stay the apartment wise again you have submitted the money over there but down the road you change the mind I'm not going back to study I don't want to go to study maybe I go to full scholarship in another country Will they return the money? Yes, they are going to return the, your money as a 100% full refundable. The only way, if there will be a bank charge, they are not going to return that amount. But that is something you need to know that uh, the procedure in Norway. So, in a very high level summary, what I'm going to explain to you. Number one, application in Norway is not complicated like application in America or in the rest of part of the Europe. Yes, you need the English proficiency test, but not all the programs they provide, all the countries they require. Uh, but sometimes it's easier to get a uh, waiver, and especially during the pandemic time. You need a resume, you need a statement of purpose, uh, you need some sort of, I mean, you need your results. Uh, sometimes, uh, some, if they need recommendation, depending, but I have applied it for someone and helped someone to apply for masters. They didn't require most of those things. They didn't require uh, recommendation letters. So all those kind of things are uh, up to that particular moment. And when you apply, you don't submit the, uh, you are going to say, I'm going to pay for myself. You are not going to pay the money just because you have applied. You have to be admitted. You have to accept to go to the university. You have to start processing the visa. That's when you are going to pay the amount of the money so that you can be able to be given the student visa. Uh, I'm going to put some of the links here which explain in detail uh, what other kind of things you need. Yeah. So, as I said, sometimes they might require the uh, the English proficiency, but sometimes you can get a waiver on that. Uh, the statement of purpose, I saw some of the masters they require, but majority they don't require. Uh, yeah. If you have any question, please let me know. But I advise you, if your aim is to really go to study, get high, high quality education, even if your goal is to go to, to come to America, to go to Canada, find a way to go to Norway first. Get a very good studies. You, from there, you upgrade, you go to another country of destination. But Norway is one among the most beautiful countries you've ever uh, be. Uh, yes, it's expensive. Yes, you have to learn Norwegian if you want to live there on a permanent basis. Uh, my brother study in Norway, uh, Oslo. I have so many friends are living, they do live now, they are citizens, some they are residents over there, they got married, some they have PhD, they are professors. So I know so many people in Norway. So it's a very good country, or the uh, very good education systems which they have in most of the Scandinavian countries. So don't waste your time and apply, oh, I'm going to study in America and I'm going to pay for myself. Why do you need to pay so much money while you can pay less and get education uh, of high quality or higher than the one you are going to get here in the U.S. Because if you come here, you might start maybe community college, or you are going to school which is in the street, not high, paying, whatever. But if you go to Norway, you are going to also Troms or Bergen, whatever, those kind of like, those are very big, old, most famous universities in the U in Europe. So, choice is yours. But I wish you all the best, and I want you to go and apply. If you have any question, any question with regard to Norway, let me know. But apart from that, if you go to my YouTube, youtube.com slash EBM Scholars, subscribe. On the playlist, there is, a, there is a scholarship in America and there are scholarships in Europe. There is a, you find all the videos just to get a full funded scholarship. I came in America, flight ticket, visa, everything was paid for under my scholarship. So I am talking for things which I know. And just to add on that, I have various books about scholarships. This is one of the book, uh, uh, True Memoirs of the Scholarship Guy. But also I have another book which is uh, the full PhD book for uh, people. And I'll put the link here. It's a free book. You can be able to download and get the information about that book. Uh, so 
all those are good things for you i don't want you not to get opportunity because you don't know the information what am I here for? To make easier path for other people to reach or succeed on things we did, you, have, you can be able to do even better than us. So send this video to your parent. If you are a parent, send this video to your, to, your, to your kids. Send this video to your teachers, professors, anybody. If someone is in high school, watch this video. Know that there are options. If your parents are able to help you with the cost of living, there are options of studying in Norway. Whether it is bachelor, master's or PhD, as long as it's a program offered in English, in public university, 100% free, don't pay school fees, you will be able to pay for cost of living but you'll get a job and you'll be able to cover those kind of expenses any question up to now the last thing subscribe 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 share the video like the video this is ebm ls bonfas makulilo thank you so much for your continued support remember the goal for the 2021 is to reach 1000 subscribers we are already in 51,000, going to 52,000. Let's subscribe. Let's share the video. Let's like. Let's engage. Let's make this video viral. Everybody could be able to get this kind of information. I really appreciate for your continued support of the EBM Scholars YouTube channel. And for those who are speaking Swahili, by the way, there is a, another channel that is for those who only know Swahili. YouTube.com slash EBM Swahili. Go to that one and subscribe that we are talking specifically for people who are speaking Swahili. Thank you.